What's going on guys? So today we are gonna put together a chassis. So this video should help you guys out. If you guys purchased a DIY chassis or you guys are interested in buying a DIY chassis, hopefully this video will help you guys out with a little information on how I put them together with no fixture, no jig, no plates or anything, just a flat table to build off of and all the tubing. So right now I'm pretty much at the point you guys would get your DIY chassis at. I just got done bending all the tubes. I've got all my tubing on this rack. A um, couple differences between the DIY chassis that you guys are going to receive and the one I'm doing. The, the one I'm going to do today is a two seat chassis. So if you guys are doing a three seat chassis, it's the same process. Um, you're just going to have an A to C pillar that's sleeved at the B pillar just to make it to where I don't have super long pieces of tube and then the main frame rail mine is solid going all the way to the front of the car um, your guys is going to be split at the front of the cab going forward and then also the rear main upper tube on the back of the car in the DIY kits they're cut and sleeved in the center and really just the reason for these little changes is just packaging on a pallet. So first thing we're gonna start with is the cab rear tube, the main passenger frame rail, and the driver frame rail. We're gonna get those square on this back tube back here, and I like to use framing square with the corner ground down, that way you can put tacks and then still stick it in the corner over that tack, so get these tubes tacked in square. So I get so used to the way that I assemble chassis here in the shop that even though I'm making a how-to video on this, I forgot that you guys aren't gonna have full length frame rails. So what I'm doing right now isn't really gonna apply to the DIY kits. You'll be doing what I'm doing right now a little later in the process. Um, starting out, you're just gonna get those cab floor frame rail tubes tacked into the cab rear tube square and then continue on with the process. So the slider tube is exactly an inch and three quarter above where the main frame rail sits. So if you just get some extra inch and three quarter tubes, put them under the slider tube, get the cab rear square to the slider tube and then put the cab front tube in place. You can tack that together and that'll have the height set and then just make sure it's level and tack it in place. So when you're tacking these together, make sure you're tacking them well enough that the chassis is not gonna move on you because the next step, we're gonna flip the chassis over so we can put the driver side and passenger side subframe tubes on, and then we're gonna put the subframe front and subframe rear tubes on. I like to use clamps to clamp these in place and then get out my laser and make sure the chassis, everything is straight from front to rear. Once you've got the subframe in place where you want it and everything's good, this is a good time to put all the subframe lacing tubes. They're labeled front to rear subframe one, two, three, and four on the driver and passenger side. So you can tack all those in starting front to rear, uh, line them up on the marks and tack it in place. For the DIY chassis, at this time, once you flip the chassis over, this is when you would tack in those front lower frame rails. But here, since we already have that taken care of, the next thing we do is take the chassis off the table and then tack the A-pillars to the dash tube. I like to lay them flat on the table and then just square up the A-pillars on the dash bar before we go ahead and put it back on the car at the angle that it goes. So like always, we get way too busy working and forgot to check the camera and the camera died so we lost some of the time lapse video. But basically the next step is we put the B pillars up and got the harness bar to set the spacing on the B pillars and then use the door bars to set the spacing from the A pillar to the B pillar. In the instructions, there is the degree that the B pillars are supposed to be set leaning back so check that with your specific chassis. Next up is gonna be putting the driver's side and passenger side front upper tubes in place, and then adding the front upper tube. Again, checking with your laser down the center of the car, making sure all of your marks are in line 
and I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of crap for this using ratchet straps. It's a very garage fab of me, but you guys are going to be assembling these in your garage, and it's a DIY kit, so you guys probably don't have any fancy fixtures or jigs or anything like that, so ratchet straps can be very, very helpful when you're trying to persuade a tube in the right direction just a little bit. So from this camera angle, it's kind of hard to see what we're doing, but basically we added the rear upper tube in the DIY kits. It is going to be a sleeved feature for shipping purposes, but you just put those two sections together with the sleeve. I recommend that you do a rosette weld along with the butt weld and then grind down the weld seam so that you don't see it. At that point, you can add the A to C pillar, which in the DIY kits are also miter cut for shipping purposes, which I recommend putting the A to C pillar on the car, tacking it together with all the roof tubes, and then pulling the A to C pillar back off the car, fully weld the miter junction, and then put it back on the car before tacking it in for final assembly. Once you've got the A to C pillar back on the car, put the brow bar in place and go ahead and tack in the debris bars. In the instruction manual, I think it's in a little bit different order, but from this point forward, you can pretty much add in the rest of the lacing tubes in the doors and the X behind the seats. All of it should line up to the marks pretty easily and you can just tack it all in place super fast. Next thing I'm going to do here is add the rear lower frame rails. I like to use pipe stands to help set the height. From this point, you're just going to make sure the rear lower tube is square and both frame rails are level with the rest of the chassis. After that, you'll be able to add in the driver's side and passenger side rear tubes. Again, with the back of the car, just make sure you check with your laser to make sure that rear tube is in line with the rest of the car.
and just a few short hours later, we've got a welded chassis. So since I had this chassis all done and ready, I really need to get back on the low budget buggy, but I needed to check some dimensions of the engine compared to just my pre-designed chassis to see if I needed to make a custom subframe length or add some to the front since this drivetrain is super long. But just from the looks of it sitting up next to it, it looks like it's going to all work out. So hopefully this video helped you guys out on assembling your DIY chassis. It's relatively simple. Really just the major part is making sure all the, the straight 90 corners are square and all your angles are the same. Everything zero front to back of the car. Uh, starting from the bottom of the car going up. If you're, you know, I always try to keep it within 0.3 of a degree um i'd say is my like rule of thumb the chassis is going to twist up a little bit when you weld it um so i'd say 0.3 of a degree is pretty uh pretty reasonable on the tolerance i'd say with these without using a fixture or a jig or anything um but when you're half a degree off on the subframe or half a degree off on on the main frame rails that's going to translate to several degrees off by the time you get to the top of the car. So trying to be as accurate as you can piece by piece, um, take a little more time as you're putting it together will help you out a lot in the long run. Uh, things will line up where they should if you uh, just take a little extra time. So with that being said, um, for some reason, all of the markings on the chassis are pretty accurate i don't know what the issue is with the b pillars um on the main a to c pillar on either the two seat or three seat chassis where the b pillar junction is on that a to c pillar every junction is rotated outwards so the marking where the b pillar lands into the a to c um and then the X and all that, the harness bar, all, well, the harness bar is into the B pillar, but anyway, um, that junction up there on the top, for some reason with the machine, I don't know, I'm gonna contact Bentec, every chassis that I've cut out uh, since I've had this machine has rotated that one specific junction up. I don't know what the issue is. The rest of the chassis goes together perfect. Um, it's on all the other marks, but for some reason, every single chassis has that issue. So just be mindful of that when you're assembling it. But other than that, thank you guys for watching. Keep it classy as always, and I'll see you guys next time.